Yo, what's good? It's your boy Zerk. So Clavicular just dropped a video about Red Atrutide, calls it the ultimate looks maxing peptide, says it's a miracle compound, better than Ozempic, better than Monjaro, better than everything. Anyway, back to the video about Red Atrutide, aka the ultimate good. So what exactly is a GLP-1 agonist? Well, the agonism of the GLP-1 receptor is going to help us decrease the calories in portion of the equation by increasing hunger control and appetite suppression. It's also going to have its effect on gastric emptying, which means you're going to stay full for a little bit longer. So having a lesser meal frequency is much more favorable for people trying to lean max. Slower gastric emptying will also reduce post-meal glucose spikes and decrease demand on insulin secretion. So obviously, if you're able to eat less to satiate yourself, you're going to be having a much easier time staying in a calorie deficit and maintaining that calories in, calories out equation that we're talking about. First, what the hell is retitrutide? Ozempic hits one receptor, GLP-1. Monjaro hits two. Retitrutide hits three. It is a triple agonist. It hits GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon. It is currently in clinical trials for people who weigh 400 pounds and have type 2 diabetes. It is nuclear warfare against fat. And clavicular, he is 6 foot 2, muscular, and 19 years old. And he is injecting this shit to lean max. Bro, you are already lean. He has taken a drug designed for morbidly obese heart patients. He sounds so smart explaining it. It has a strong affinity for the GIP receptor. Bro, you sound like a Pfizer scientist. You are using a fancy vocabulary to justify an eating disorder. So let's talk about the glucogen agonism. So this is where RETA really stands out from the dual and single and cretins. So glucogen is going to increase your heart rate and cardiac output. So what does that mean? More calories out. This also has an effect on your satiation and has another mechanism of slowing your gastric emptying. So this is really, really like putting all the puzzle pieces together. Glucogen has a multitude of effects on the liver and adipose tissue. In the liver, it increases liver cell survival and increases liposis, which creates free fatty acids. It also increases thermogenesis and liposis, which further drives the free fatty acids to convert into ketones. So this is literally forcing your body to burn excess fat. Most studies will indicate this is probably going to increase increase your caloric expenditure by about 150 to 200 calories. Then he gets to the glucagon part, and this is where the laziness reaches an elite level. He says, glucagon increases your heart rate and cardiac output. It forces your body to burn 150 to 200 extra calories a day. So let me get this straight. You are injecting a research chemical that spikes your heart rate and does God knows what so you can burn 200 calories while sitting in your gaming chair bro just go for a walk he says i hate cardio yeah we know you'd rather chemically torture your heart valves than put on a pair of running shoes he is hacking his body to simulate exercise while he edits videos about his chin this shit sticks to your blood for six days it has a fatty acid tail that binds to your abumen that means once you shoot it you are locked in for the week you can't turn it off if you start tweaking you are tweaking until next tuesday so let's talk about the muscle retention on retitrutide versus the other GLP-1s. Obviously, all the GLP-1 agonists are going to lead to fat loss, but we don't want to just lose weight. We want to lose adipose tissue and retain as much lean muscle mass as we can. Ozempic has a horrible amount of muscle loss, with an average of 23 to 30% of the weight loss being from muscle itself. Perzipatide is slightly better, but it's still in the neighborhood of 15 to 30%. But retitrutide is only at 8 to 12% of the weight loss coming from muscle mass. This is mostly due to the glucogen and GIP anabolic signaling. So obviously retitrutide is going to be the most conducive to bodybuilding, looks maxing, whatever you want to call it, because you're going to retain the most lean muscle. Now, here's where Clavicular started stretching the truth real hard. He said Ozempic causes 23 to 30% muscle loss. Manjaro causes 15 to 30% muscle loss. But Retitrutide only causes 8 to 12% muscle loss. Bro, where did you get those numbers? Now, to be fair, all of these drugs preserve muscle better than straight up dieting or bariatric surgery, which can be 40 to 50% muscle loss. So it's not terrible. But clavicular made it sound like retitrutide is magic for muscle retention. It ain't. It's pretty much the same as Ozempic, maybe slightly worse. It also has benefits for your liver, which is especially good for people like me running Accutane, Orals, and a bunch of other compounds. He has taken retitrutide to fix his liver because he destroyed his liver with Accutane and oral steroids. He is playing pharmacy Jenga. He is taking drugs to fix the side effects of the other drugs. 
He says it enhances fatty acid oxidation. Bro, you are 19. Your liver should be pink and fresh. You shouldn't need liver fat reduction unless you are a 50-year-old alcoholic. So the studies show it has a lot of benefits on your liver with a 40 to 60% reduction in liver fat due to the enhanced fatty acid oxidation. This basically means the liver burns fat for energy instead of storing it. That's very good for you. Now, let's talk about what retitrutide is actually good for, because it's not all bullshit. The lipid improvements are insane. We're talking 20% reduction in LDL cholesterol, significant improvements in triglycerides, better HDL ratios. If you're on gear, which clavicular is, this is huge, cause steroids mess up your lipids. He also mentioned liver benefits, and he's right. Studies show 40 to 60% reduction in liver fat. Your liver starts burning fat instead of storing it. This is great for people on oral steroids or Accutane, which clavicular takes at crazy doses. So for him specifically, this makes sense. So if you got metabolic issues, bad lipids, or fatty liver, retitrutide is pretty good. Now let's talk about side effects, because ain't nothing free in this world. The most common side effect, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, all the fun GI shit. Clavicular said he didn't get nauseous. Great for him, but in clinical trials, most people did, especially at higher doses. The studies show GI side effects happened to a majority of users, particularly during dose escalation. Some people had to drop out because they couldn't handle it. If you've never taken this stuff before and you start with retitrutide, you're probably going to feel like shit for a few weeks. So there's not really a consensus on dosing protocol, but I'll tell you what I did. I was already on GLP-1 agonist, so I could get away with starting a bit higher. I started at 7.5 milligrams, now I'm on 10 milligrams. If you're already on a GLP-1 or used the GLP-1 before, you could get away with this as well. But if you haven't adapted to GLP-1 signalings, I would start at around 2.5 milligrams for the first week. Then the week after that, you could bump your way up to five and see how you're feeling. Here's my issue with how this gets marketed in the looks maxing community. They act like drugs are the answer to everything. Can't get lean? Take retitrutide. Can't build muscle? Take steroids. Skin not perfect? Take Accutane. Hair thinning? Block all your DHT. At what point do you just accept that maybe you should try the normal shit first? Like before you inject experimental peptides that aren't FDA approved, maybe you try eating in a calorie deficit, going to the gym consistently, getting enough sleep, not eating garbage food. Revolutionary concepts, I know. Retitrutide works but it's a tool for people who've already tried everything else or people with serious metabolic issues or people like clavicular who are already on a pharmacy's worth of drugs. It's not for someone who just wants abs for summer and hasn't tried eating chicken and rice. The only side effect I noticed is that my arms felt a little bit weak for some reason the day after I first dosed retitrutide, but besides that, I had no nausea or, or no issues like that. He says, I started at 7.5 milligrams. Now I'm at 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams! That is a massive dose for a skinny guy. And what happened? He says, my arms felt weak the next day. Bruh, that is your body going into catabolic shock. That is your body realizing it has no glycogen, no sugar, and no will to live. And he brushes it off. Oh, just a little arm weakness, no big deal. He calls it a miracle compound. No, it is a miracle that you haven't collapsed yet. When he's 30, he's gonna have the heart of an 80 year old and the liver of a Chernobyl victim. But hey, at least he'll be lean maxed, right? I'm out. I'm going to go eat a burger and do some actual cardio.